Hey, hey, John O'Brien. This is the How You Come Up series. How You Come Up. Little snippets on, on success. Um, so I'm writing a book right now, and people say, well, how do, you, how do I become a, I don't want to get a, a book deal. Well, start a blog, write some articles. Uh, you know, just yesterday, a big publication was talking about doing a big deal with me. Um, little did I know they were on my LinkedIn page and on my, all my pages for the last 60 days, reading everything I've done, watching all my videos before they had word one conversation with me. And I know these folks. But they're just doing their job. How do you make a how do you cut a big deal? Listen now. Start with a small one. I can't stress this enough. Folks come to me as recently as a month ago. Guy's so broke he can't pay attention. Okay? He's so poor he can't afford for the OR. Just PO, P O, not P P O O R, just PO, P O. PO financially poor in financial literacy, poor in 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 uh, not in ambition, but poor in uh, patience. He won't invest his time in uh, hope uh, small business classes, some hopes entrepreneurship classes. Won't impress, impress his time in a credit score, uh, some of the credit score classes. Won't do anything I told him to do. Recommended that I, and I do. By the way, my mother always said, "Don't offer advice because because wise men don't need it and fools don't listen." <laughs> okay, uh, so. Uh, you see a Hawaiian here in the background, or, or, you know, uh, and and these Hawaiian ladies, the whole they had to be patient, right? You had to do you had to do this job of preparing to go for your men to go out to sea to provide the fish for the day patiently and well. Otherwise, the boat would spring a leak, the equipment wouldn't work, and the whole day would be lost, and maybe your family would be lost too. Patience and commitment and doing things step by step. Little things become big things. Ten one equals ten. To quote my friend Rod McGrew. Again, my mother always said, don't offer advice because wise men don't need it and fools don't listen. I'm not offering you advice. I'm giving you an observation. The guy walks uh, up to me a month ago and says, John, you know, John, I got $50 million in uh, uh, Vietnamese, whatever the currency is, in my safe. I'm like, well, cool, man. Go cash it like now, <laughs> okay? If you got some, some third world currency, no disrespect to Vietnam, in your safe, from wherever it is, right? Go cash it before the market crashes. If you got if you got anything with an, an M next to it in your safe, not traded in the marketplace on and and there's and it's worth more than you pay for it, significantly more. Uh, if you think it's legitimate currency, go pay, go, go cash it and and take that and put it into your next big deal. But this guy wanted me to believe that he can't even pay for lunch. All right, <laughs> okay. I know. I mean, really nice guy, by the way. I'm not dissing him. Really nice guy, but but this happens all the time. My whole life, this guy can't pay for lunch, can't do a deal for you know, maybe struggling to pay rent for a thousand dollars, right? But he wants to do a deal with me for fifty million dollars and wants me to trade up the fifty million, introduce him to banks, lines of credit, letters of credit. He's been spending too much time on the internet, not getting educated, but being played, right? If it sounds to be good to be true, it normally is. If you can't pay for lunch for 20 bucks, don't come to me with a deal for $20 million or anybody else. By the way, it makes you look foolish. Uh, and my prediction is, unfortunately, uh, that person is going to lose their money. Uh, Bitcoin, right? I keep telling folks, right? Don't don't bet your rent money on Bitcoin. Bitcoin went up to you know $2,000, crashed down. Uh, to uh, what was it, 400 bucks? I don't know where it is now. But the, and, and and by the way, uh, uh, blockchain behind Bit Bitcoin is legitimate, right? But that's a technology. Bitcoin is not investing; it's speculation. It's like going to Las Vegas. You may make a lot of money. You may lose a lot of money. It's investor speculation. Don't bet your rent money. But everybody's trying to get rich quick. That's why this, this is why the lottery does so well. This is why Las Vegas does so well. This is why shysters continue to do well. This is why folks can prey on folks who have large ambitions but no patience, won't, who don't want to do the, the steps or don't know how to do the steps. I'm assuming that you may not know how to do the steps. And, and, and the first thing you want to bite off on is a huge deal. Do not do it. Listen to me now. Uh, I've had this countless times. People come to me, you know, a uh, letter of credit deal for $10 million, foreign currency deal for $50 million. Every time, 100% of the time, the person's broke. 100% of the time when somebody brings it to me, when somebody brings you one of these deals, consider it's never a billionaire. 
is never Warren Buffett. By the way, if these deals were legitimate, Warren Buffett and all of his cadre, all my friends, Tony Ressler, Michael Arigetti, all these people, would have, Matt Schumann, would have done the deal already, all right? Uh, they'd have done the deal already, all right? So if it comes, if it's getting down to your level, to the retail level, and you're the postman or whatever, again, no disrespect to the postman, my father was a general contractor. If some million dollar, $10 million global investment deal comes to the level of my father, there's probably something wrong with it. What did I do? What did John Bryan do? I did something that I could control. Listen to me now. Every deal I did was within my, my grasp. I didn't do a deal that required 15 people. I didn't do a deal that required me leaning on somebody else. I didn't do, do an early deal that required uh, leverage, uh, other than the leverage of my own credibility, my own name. So I didn't use other people's money. Uh, actually, I did when I was 16, so I ended up homeless. It's another story. Um, I didn't use, but it wasn't big money. We're talking about a few hundred bucks. Um, I didn't. I, I wasn't doing multi-million dollar deals. I did uh, uh, JB's uh, concert promotion, JB's, uh, JHB's uh, uh, auto detailing business, JHB's marketing business. I, I, I had businesses that I could control myself and I could make commitments and know I could keep them. And, and, and I leveled up. I did a deal and did another deal. And by the way, I took the money, reinvested it. No fancy cars, no fancy, no flossing, no going to Miami and chilling, right? No, only in the word, only in the dictionary does the word uh, success come before the word work because it's alphabetical. If you want to do a big deal, this is your thought for the day, learn how to do a small one. If you want to succeed in a big deal, get a series of small ones and get a reputation. I'll do the next video maybe on credit, how to get it, what it means, how to use, po how to positively use leverage, uh, and what I call good debt. All debt's not good debt. Go, you, you go on sh shopping when you don't, when you don't have no money. That's bad debt. But when you're using it to build something like a business uh, return investment, that's good debt. I'll show you how to use that in the next video. Go to Operation Hope today and take your life back. Find one of my Hope Inside locations. Get the book, The Memo, Love Leadership, How the Forks Save Capitalism, and the new book I'm writing. I'll let you know about that one in the future. I'm out.